so sometimes we'll we'll bump into somebody who um, says, "Well, hey man, li life is all a dream," or or you don't you don't know what I'm talking about, um, and uh, or or you get people that say, "Look, there 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 is no ground, there is no world." And, and then and then you get into questions about well is it an illusion or is at this point this is a perception that you have but you, then you just get people to say no there's 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 a ground but we can never know it we're always going to be just separate from it and then that's where the Kant's uh, noumena phenomena distinction comes into play is to not agree that there is a ground to have denial of the ground. Well, to deny the ground means to deny the description of how it is an individual came to have language, which I was hoping to do with these earlier videos. So I'm describing a ground, I'm describing language acquisition for the individual. And this is important because the confidence uh, in the ground is the starting point from which the focal points and, and the naming of nouns and objects and, and adjectives of objects or prepositionally adjectives are prepositionally uh, of, about, or around objects. Um, and, then, and then you have objects of the mind, or you have objects like ideas, or mind, or God, or ghosts, or uh, uh, imaginary creatures that are not empirical, or testable, or obvious. So then this person, you say, well, uh, then you can start arguing the difference between uh, an imagined idea and an empirical idea, an ostensible idea and a demonstrative uh, idea. So then, then uh, then, then these things will hopefully ground the individual. Now, by grounding, it, it's perfectly okay if one wants to put their feet in the air and their head on the ground and spin within the locus of the belief and within their imagination, within their mind. I'm, I'm all for it. I'll back that up any day. I'll back up whoever's writing whatever because people can follow the texts and people can get caught up in the head or out of their head. Now, just the whole distinction of what does it mean to be in one's head or be out of one's head? What does it mean for a fly to be caught in the fly bottle and never see how it's getting out, but to never recognize that this ghost, this, this bottle is real and it can't get out? But for language metaphoric state, this is the case of the solipsist who's in denial of the objective world, but the objectivist wants to rhetorically point, which is no argument itself. So to demonstrate a demonstrative evidence of the real world would be found in the Wittgensteinian uh, uh, description of I'm building a building and I tell you to go get a brick and you bring me uh, a brick and I say great and I put it down I say now go get me another brick and you go out and you bring me a slab of wood and I'm like okay wait no slab of wood that's that's not what I need so I, I say no 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 I mean a brick so not this thing but something else so you go back and you get a brick and then I I praise you for it or, or you're okay with it so um, because of that you come back and uh, and and then and then you continue to go get a brick, a brick, a brick, because I'm asking for more bricks and more bricks and more bricks, and and so pretty soon in the repetition itself, my saying brick, you bringing brick, my saying brick, you bringing brick, these repetitions are evidence that you understand that a brick is a brick, or that brick equals brick, and brick does not equal slab. So after, let's say, we got through three-fourths of the house, and I'm like, go get me a brick, and you bring me back a pitchfork. And I'm like, well, I, I need another brick, don't you understand? And you're like, no, I, I, was, I don't understand. I was just arbitrarily grabbing something. I, you know, hey, man, that guy's deaf. He, he was just following you pointing, and, and it was all random. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, well, there, there's a new variable for us to discuss. There's a new uh, variable for us to encounter. So then maybe I draw a picture of a brick and send you, and, and you come back giving me what I want and what I need. Um, and, and then this image somehow, or this rule, this game, this process, this, this interaction is getting me that item, that real item, but the grammar 
the mere fact that it can be described a lot of ways or we can change up the grammar as long as we're being fulfilled. See, be, just being fulfilled uh, as the building maker does not mean that there is no objective world. It, being fulfilled means that you're getting what you want but we're still using the objective world. Now, I'm only demonstrating it because uh, the, the sensation, once again, that the baby has when you're tickling it or picking it up or, or how you feel when you're, you're touched or you're engrossed within your body, your par uh, carcass, your sexuality. Um, these types of uh, textures on your senses are indicators of of what it is to have a physical world. If we say, oh, we're nervous beings, just the grammar of, keep in mind, we are nervous beings. Yes, we put off energy, but we only feel what our nerves are able to let us feel. So just that, the limitation of where one's nerves are is a descriptive process of saying, whatever I am sensing with my hand when I don't believe that I'm asleep, is, is part of the real world, and it's not an amputee cut off. I have no reason to believe that I'm amputated or that I'm asleep. I believe I'm using the language correctly, and I believe this is tape and that I'm feeling it in my hand. If we've covered all the doubts and nobody else comes in to implement a new doubt and try to kick one, pull the carpet out from underneath them, and, and, and have them spin and throw their, their heads above their body or disorient them from their grounded orientation where it is they, they do not deny that, that they walk on the ground and they, they do not try to walk upwards down or they don't try to walk upwards down descending staircases. They walk downward and they're reiterating from their focal points, from their physiology, from their faculty, they're agreeing with everything that they already inherited as to how it is their predecessors agree, how it is their predecessors uh, congeal in, in sex and birth and, and procreation and then the application of language based on utilizing different objects with adjectives such as color to make distinguishments or one thing called a toy, the other thing called a voice all these things that we can point to. So it is possible that if somebody can come in and shake the ground of you and, and help you not see that there's clarity or that there's more complications, we need more variables, we need, we need to speak about this more succinctly until you are confident. Well, this is why we have the science of physics, because physics is dealing with real world events and granted, there's probably very minute problems with physics periodically that occur um, uh, and, 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 and molecular physics and atomic physics and Heisenberg's own uh, principles and, and theory. This, this, these are all accounted for, but physics on the basic Newtonian level is still a justification where we are reiterating the same grammars and it keeps reinforcing our confidence because we keep building machine after machine. There's so many cars in the world because we built so many cars in the world because we're trusting the physics behind the cars and we're not doubting them. So there is a ground based on the confidence, but uh, you know, maybe the Heisenberg unprincipability factor will determine whether or not you have better gas mileage or worse gas mileage, or, or maybe something else will come into play that will confuse an aspect of it. But really, where it is we trust the world is what it is we call the world, and our grammar responds off of that. But it, it's not to say it's not impossible to fit another grammar that will that we'll try to uh, make uh, uh, it convenient to never evidence the ground, to never be confident of it. But I would suggest to people that do that, that they are already blind to whatever it is that they're speaking of because they must be confident in whatever it is they're speaking uh, about uh, the base from which they're speaking. They need to be confident in that. So they're confident in something while they're disrupting another form of confidence.